What up, y'all? Straight out of Buffalo, New York, I got a chance to sit down with an author, an artist, a musician known as Goodness. I hope y'all like this interview. Ask y'all to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all check it out. Hello. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. How are you? I am well. You can hear me? Can you hear me really good? You will. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you can hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. I ain't gonna hold you. I definitely appreciate you doing this interview with me. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad that we finally had the chance to connect. Yes, ma'am. And uh, before we go any further, I just want to thank Big Sin over there in uh, Henderson, North Carolina for, you know, aligning this up and setting it up. I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Um, it's good to meet good people. Um, uh, like I told you when we first met, I just just trying to reach out, just trying to network with people, make connections, make a good long-term connections and friendships with people. And, and I appreciate it. I really do. And um, I'm glad this is the first interview, and I hope it won't be the last interview. No, that's right. I'm going to jump right into it. Um, up until now, for people who don't know who goodness is, talk about what you do and why it's so important to you. Okay. Well, um, hello, everybody. Um, well, my name is Goodness, and I'm a poet from Buffalo, New York. And uh, I've been doing poetry for years. Actually, I've been writing for years. Um, when I was in my teens, I was in a, a rap group. And it was three females, myself and uh, two cousins of mine. And we were called Trey B. And um, we won a local radio contest here in Buffalo, New York. You know, so I've always been a writer. I've been a writer throughout school, high school. And um, so... I was in a car accident in 2009 and it kind of altered my uh, my living, you know, it just altered my world. So it brought me back to my first love, which was writing. And I was like writing like water, writing like water. And um, I would go to some of the open um, local open mics here every week, every other week. It was like I was in concert. And um, then I finally started putting open mics together for myself, for the adults. And um, I had giveaways, this and the other. And to me, it seemed like the adults weren't as appreciative as I thought they would be. So, you know, at one point, God put it on my heart to put open mics together for the youth, the inner city youth at that. I was in a poetry marathon and it went on for like two days. And the people who put it on was called the Urban Epiphany. And, and I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to hold you. I automatically thought it was like, you know, African-American people, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, but it was a really nice event. And I think like out of everybody, I may have been the only African-American there and the only African-American female. And a stanza or two from my poem was placed in the Buffalo News. So I really appreciated that. And that inspired me to want to put something together like that for our youth. And I was doing that for a, a maybe, I want to say 10 or 11 years close to 12. Um, I've written three poetry books, self-published. You can find them on createspace.com, kendo.com, and amazon.com. And I've also been involved in the Juneteenth, different events throughout the years, um, and different community organizations. I was a um, tradition keeper, Black Storytellers of Western New York, which is a group of elite women to me. Uh, real seasoned elders. And at one point I may have been the youngest member, but you know, like I said, I'm from Buffalo, New York. I'm a poetess. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Griot Nation, uh, but the Griot Nation, you know, they broadcast out of our local radio station here. And one year we brought them here for the Juneteenth. So I was a part of the uh, Griot Poet Society, you know, just a few things. So um, that's, that's what I was doing in the beginning. And if, uh, if I may take a moment, this is my book. My first book is called Naughty Tree, Nice and Naughty Poetry. And there's been so many different, uh, editions of it. The, uh, current one has my photo on it. And this is the second one. It's, uh, Naughty Tree, Nice and Naughty, um, Naughty, uh, Poetry too. Naughty Tree, Nice and Naughty Poetry too. 
So yeah, you know, I've done a few things and, but I took a sabbatical though. And uh, it wasn't really by choice. Um, talk about your love for poetry and how it brings out your other talents and ideas. Oh, okay, thank you. Well, you know, I really, really love poetry. I've always loved storytelling. You know, I love reading um, and listening to poetry more so than I love reciting, you know. But my real passion is reciting. Uh, when I'm on stage, I'm like a whole different person. Um, but my love for poetry, you know, it brings a lot of joy to me. And when I'm writing poetry, sometimes I feel I have something to say that somebody might want to hear. Or, you know, oftentimes I've heard people say, oh, girl, please get out of my head. You're saying things that I've been thinking but don't know how to put in words. So I am very blessed to be gifted with this talent. And um, I know you have another question for me, but I'll answer that, you know, when, when it, the question is posed. But, you know, I also, I used to draw. And it all started when I'm sure everybody knows uh, my mother, you know, what your parents or your grandparents probably used to receive the uh, Reader's Digest. And I used to, uh, you know, they had a contest where you would draw the little turtle or, or you know, either an elephant and you send it in or whatever for the prize. But that's how I really got into drawing. And um, I used to say I was self-taught, but now that I'm older, I realized that I was God taught. And, um, you know, I taught myself how to skate, ride a bike, swim, do hair, whatever, anything that was art related. And I always used to say I was self-taught, but I was God taught. And so when I got into high school, I took studio and arts, introduction to arts. So I've always loved art. And uh, so I just recently started painting again about a couple of years ago. And um, so my love for poetry is real, real strong, you know. Um, it's something about wordplay. When I was younger, my mother got me that um, word game boggle. And that was like the best gift I could have ever received, better than a Barbie or, a, you know, a Easy Bake Oven, because I love playing with words. I love, I love the the whole thing about being a wordsmith and being able to break words down and, you know, put the infliction or the, the emphasis on them, you know, it's just, it's just something beautiful to me. So I love that. Um, I know when we spoke a while back, you had talked about the, your brother and his, his passing, uh, rest in peace to him. Talk about Amen. how his, his, um, his passing motivated you to produce more, Poetry, not only poetry and music, being an author, all that stuff. Oh, great. Thank you. Well, yes, as I was stating, um, you know, I used to write like crazy and I used to put shows together. I would have hip hop artists, inspirational hip hop artists, comedians, poets, R&B singers, dancers. And, um, you know, my brother would attend a lot of my shows. My brother was like my biggest supporter, one of my biggest supporters. He actually was one of the reasons that I started doing open mics. He had spoke with this lady at a, an establishment and gave her my number and gave me her number. And uh, I set up a call and that's how that went. But, you know, that was something very, very tragic that I experienced that, now that really transformed my life. That really altered my life. Um, my brother was my best friend. And, you know, I was taking care of him during his illness. And um, he passed away in front of me. He went into cardiac arrest in front of me. And, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> feeling helpless, like you can't help them, you can't save them. I tried to do CPR, I was panicking. And so it put me in a really, really, really depressed state, really, really depressed state. And um, for a while I couldn't eat, I would cry every day. I would cry so much to the point where 
my voice was so hoarse. I even experienced laryngitis at one point where I couldn't talk. So that is probably one of the reasons why my voice is extra raspy. It's always been raspy, but, you know, and um, so I stopped writing. I stopped reciting. I stopped performing. I stopped putting events together. And um, I know I know from experience that people can uh, pass away from a broken heart. And so I knew that depression, there's, there's really probably like two things. It, it could be more, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know for sure it is two things that will eat you from the inside out and kill you. And that's depression and parasites, you know? And so I had to stop and try to get to a point of grieving where I can start living again, paying better attention to my health. You know, I fell down three steps. I was at my cousin's house and I fell down three steps, just the bottom steps. And I heard a snap, crack, and pop. I broke the three top bones, two top bones and one side bone, little pieces. But had I not done that, I would have never discovered that I had really, really bad hypertension. My blood pressure was through the roof. And they were amazed that I was walking around on that foot, let alone walking around. So, and after going to a specialist, I found out that I have a right bundle blockage. <laughs> and so I know that that came from a broken heart. I know that that came from that depression. So during that depressed period, I want to say maybe 2019, 2020, I picked up a paintbrush. So, and he, he passed in front of me in 2018. So this year, May 4th, made it five years. And um, so I couldn't write. I couldn't think straight. I can't write when I'm depressed. I can't write when I'm going through something and I'm hurt. So what I did was I dropped one art form for another. And I picked up a, a paintbrush as opposed to a pen. And, and I started painting. And, and I started painting my heart out. I started painting my pain. And what I did was I created a mock studio. And, and, I, and I had to tell myself that when you're in this art studio, you are not allowed to cry. This is a place of peace. This is a place for you to connect with God. This is a place for you to you know, reminisce in a joyful uh, manner, you know? So I, I started painting and um, a sister of mine, a sister queen of mine, we had a uh, virtual art show, it was during the pandemic and it was pretty, pretty um, well received. I think we had like 1.K something views. I'm not sure what the views are now. Um, and then in December of 2021, I believe I had my first solo art show and I did a series of butterflies and it was called the butterfly collection. And that went over really well. I had a, a total of 13 um, photos or excuse me, paintings. And I just figured why not make it a baker's dozen. And out of 13 paintings, I came home with three. So I felt that that was very successful for my first art solo art show, you know? And so I mean, I paint uh, various different things. Um, you know, later on, maybe I can show you a few more of my paintings or, you know, when I go through my next series, um, I did a series of acrylic paint pours. So I just had a couple of small pieces just to, you know, show your viewers. Um, this was a piece that I've done. And there are actually three different canvases that I, Jimmy rigged together, you know, I like different shape uh, canvases and so on. Um, I came across this really beautiful butterfly canvas, but what I did was I chose to do an acrylic paint pour, um, sort of like a ladder, a ladder portrait or whatever they're called. Um, and then there's this young man on YouTube, excuse me, yes. And I think he goes by Jay Lee Painting. And um, uh, so, you know, I've always looked at his paintings, but never really stopped to actually paint one. So I did this one. 
and again the the oval shape I, I fell in love with that canvas and um i had a family member who passed away in a real tragic tornado that happened in alabama uh, maybe two years ago one of my mother's sisters rest her soul rest all their souls you know yeah. and um it was a real tragic uh tornado and it was across the river she didn't think she was in grave danger and was on the phone with the matriarch of our family, the oldest sister of my mother. And um, she said it wasn't going to bother her, that she wasn't worried. But it crossed the river, picked her house up, put it on top of another house. And out of all the people who were in her house and all the people who were involved in that, that tragic part of the accident or that tornado, she was the only casualty. So... That that was the first painting that I painted when we moved into this, you know, house where we're residing now. And um, so this was another acrylic paint pour that I've done. I've made a couple of clocks, you know, and things like that. So, you know, going through that experience with my brother, it 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 brought back out the artist in me. And and I'm so thankful for these different gifts that that God has instilled in me. And I'm trying to utilize them to the best of my ability. And so what the what the painting did was brought me back to the words. Now, going back to the poetry, uh, Big Sin, bless up, bless up, Big Sin. And Taz, Taz that MC, they have the MC Hip Hop Radio Podcast. And so a few years ago, I was doing a podcast. I was a co-host with a, with a sister queen that lives here in Buffalo, New York. And I set it up where as though we interviewed Big Sen uh, because I, we followed each other on Instagram and I am a big fan of his, uh, his music. Uh, that young man is so old school hip hop. His soul is so authentic hip hop. It is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. His drip, his flow is, 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 uh, is the flow I like to hear that I'm from, the era I'm from. And so we, we interviewed this young man and so when him and uh, Taz got their radio podcast, he in turn reached out and, and, you know, interviewed me, which I thought was really wonderful. And so they had a round table one point, and then at, I think they had it twice, and I was involved in that as well. And I met a group of individuals throughout that uh, podcast. Everybody exchanged uh, social media information. Everybody started following each other and un from the Unfadables, recently reached out to me and asked me would I, you know, be a part of their uh, new album that's coming out? Would I be the intro to the new album? He was like, I think your poetry will set it off. And so I was really honored, you know, and that was a challenge for me because I do love a challenge, you know? And so that led to The Day the Sun Burnt Out, which is the title of their album, and also the title of my spoken word piece. And anybody can find that on all the major uh, streaming platforms. And then that prompted me to, uh, you know, do a volume two to the uh, spoken word EP that I wanted to put out, that I put out years ago. I had a spoken word um EP, it had maybe at least about three tracks on it. Uh, one was called, uh, <clears throat> oh, Options. That was my fave, that was my fave, Options. And then I had Police Brutality. And then I think I had another version of Police Brutality or something like that. So now I'm doing a volume two and it's called Lips of a Poet because the next book that I plan to put out is called Pages of a Poet. So you have the EP that's Lips of a Poet, and then you have the book that's the uh, Pages of a Poet. So I um, just recently dropped a track called Unfadeable in honor of being accepted or, you know, a part of the, um, you know, group, the Unfadeables, which are a group of talented individuals, but they're also individually talented on their own. You know, if you can, if you know what I mean, so. I'm gonna have new music coming out again. I'm looking to get back into the studio and uh, putting out more tracks. And that track, Unfadeable, it is also on all streaming platforms, uh, featuring a sister queen of mine, MC Kokeezy, uh, who happened to be, she was the host for a couple of the events that I used to put together. And she's also a comedian and a hell of a singer. So 
I hope that, you know, sums up or answers some of your questions because I might have veered off to the left and then came back. Yeah. Um, last question, then I'm going to let you go. Uh -huh. uh, for you, for people to talk about, shout out your social media and uh, more ways of finding your music and your poetry as you've, as, as you've already done. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, um, like, again, you can get the books, Naughty Tree, Nice and Naughty Poetry, and uh, Naughty Tree 2, Nice and Naughty Poetry. And then there's also one, it was an inspirational, um, Jesus, I haven't seen them in so long. You know, and then my memory escapes me sometimes from those accidents. But you can get those on um, Amazon.com, Kendall.com, and CreateSpace.com. Also, as far as the music, you can find The Day the Sun Burnt Out, and that's The Unfadables featuring goodness. And that's uh, U-N-F-A-D-E-A-B-L-E-Z. And that's Unfadables featuring goodness. And then also the title track that I have on my EP is called Unfadable. And that's featuring MC Kokeezy. And I just want to shout out Monique Cunningham for the cover art. She did the cover art for the first one, and she did it for the second one, and she nailed it to the wall. Oh, my God. It was so beautiful. And it was so pleasing to me. And then also, you can catch me at uh, Chandrell Latrice Simone on Facebook. Or you can get me at at poetess underscore goodness on IG. Yeah. Um, thank you for your time. And I appreciate this uh, interview. I thank you. And I appreciate you for reaching out. I really didn't expect to... Um, burst into tears sometimes i can get past talking about my brother without tears and then i don't want to put on this little fake dollar tree makeup and i want to start smearing it looking like tammy faye baker so, you know, <laughs> and um That's and, fine. Um, it's, a, it's a free space here thank you and then speaking of comedy you know my brother used to tell me like a week or so before he passed he was like you're missing your calling you, you, you're really a comic, you know, you're really a comedian. He was like, you're a hell of a poet, but you're a broke poet. He was like, so, you know, get your money up first doing your comedy, and then you can do whatever you want. But, you know, there is a comedy in my poetry. But, you know, I don't know why the people say I'm funny sometimes, but I guess I better believe them. <laughs> um, I enjoyed it. Uh, you stay up and stay blessed. I will, and I thank you so much. And again, I hope we get a chance to... Uh, you know, do this interview again. And let me not fail to mention, I also do um, a show. I do a Facebook Live on Facebook, the Oh My Goodness Show. And that stemmed from me having a show a few years ago on public access. It was called the Oh My Goodness Show, the public access here in Buffalo, New York. And so, you know, I just rebooted it a couple of years ago. And so you know how people have the uh, re-grand opening. So this is the re-re-reboot of the uh, Oh My Goodness show. And uh, maybe I can get you on there on Facebook Live and interview you. And so the people can know what you're doing and um, how you touching and blessing the world. Yes, and I thank you for being a blessing to me and touching my heart today. Yes, ma'am. Oh, take yeah, care. Before we, yeah, before we sign out, let me hit them with my famous. Uh, get on. <laughs> get on. It's your girl, goodness. All caps, two dollar signs for the ethics, no lowercase. <laughs> All right, you take care. You too. All right.